Today we're gonna to make a still air box. It's a pretty simple contraption. This particular box that I'm gonna be using is a 66 quart tub. Um, you can use anything 60 to 80, even 100 quarts. The bigger, honestly, is probably a little bit better. 100 quarts was a little bit too big. It was ended up being like almost four feet across. It was way bigger than I really needed. Um, this was honestly a little bit smaller than I needed. I would have liked to have found an 80 quart tub. Uh, nothing was available. I got this one at, at Lowe's for $15. Uh, so basically what we're going to do is uh, a still air box is just in, in uh, it's meant to be an environment that keeps the air still so that we're going to, when we do mycology work, we'll stick our hands into here. This will kind of be a, a dome that'll keep the air from flowing back and forth. It'll keep all the particulates inside. I'll kind of keep them uh, still so we're, so they're not moving around and getting into our work. And then we'll take it, take this, the inside of this box, we'll spray it down. Uh, with a bleach and water solution. And then once, once that's kind of been sprayed down, uh, all the particulates, all the bacteria, any other fungus that might be in there, any other spores that are floating around in there, that should all be dead. And then it's a safe environment for us to be able to put our hands into, obviously our clean hands, put our clean hands into and be able to do some mycology work without having to, uh, to buy a flow hood, which would be the ideal setup is to have a flow hood. But uh, when, you're, when you're just starting out, you know, spending 200 to 600 or even a thousand bucks on a flow hood, that's not really in the cards, but uh, a still air box for 15 or 20 bucks, it's a pretty simple project, project to make. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a cookie sheet and I'm gonna lay it down here on the counter and then there's a little lip that goes right along the box edge there. I'm just gonna take that and have it wrap around the lip. That way when I take this, I've got it heated up. When I'm pushing it down to go through the plastic, um, if anything slips, it kind of all goes in one, in one direction. It doesn't move around there like that. So here's my pan lid. I'm gonna let that go for about a minute or two until it seems like it's nice and hot. And then I'll uh, use a pot holder and I'll press that through the plastic. All right, while we're waiting for that to heat up, what you wanna do is kind of get this, get an idea of where this is gonna sit when you're normally gonna work in it. If you're gonna be standing up or sitting down, then actually sit down in that spot and see where your hands are gonna feel comfortable. So for me, I'll usually be standing up. Um, so I'm just gonna put a mark about there and about there. It doesn't have to be perfect, but when you put your holes down, you wanna see where you're lining up and at least make sure you're getting yourself close so your hands aren't like way up too high or way, way down too low. All right, and now we're gonna grab this off the stove. I'm not gonna put a ton of pressure on here. Oops, I got this upside down. I'm not gonna put a ton of pressure on here. I'm just gonna kinda of let this sit and just push it just gently. I'm just going to try to twist it back and forth. And that looks like it's just about all the way through there. And then we'll repeat the process. Okay, and now for the second one. There, it's through. Okay, now that that's done, so we're just taking. Work them out there just a little bit, but it came out real easy. And just like that, we have a still air box. So we can use that still air box flat on the counter just like that and have our work inside of it can have the bottom on. Okay, so we're gonna go over uh, how to use the still air box now. The first thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we're sterile. So if you were going to be doing anything that did not require using a flame, it would be perfectly fine to use 70% isopropyl alcohol inside of this, spray the entire inside of it down. Um, but if you're gonna be doing anything that requires using a flame to like flame sterilize a needle, or flame sterilize your scalpel, then you do not want to use alcohol in here. 
because uh, you can start a fire. What you want to use is a bleach and water concentrate. Um, I do 50-50, so, you know, one cup bleach, one cup water. Uh, CDC website says 10, uh, one cup of water to one gallon of, uh, excuse me, one cup of bleach to one gallon of water. So I do a one-to-one. -one. I just like to make sure that it's going to be as sterile as it can be. Uh, so we're going to put on some gloves. Then we're going to start cleaning the inside of this thing. And I'll show you guys how we're going to do some... Uh, today we're going to be doing a transfer. Excuse me. We're going to be doing spores. I'm going to do spores to agar. And then I'm also going to be doing an agar to agar transfer with some mycelium that's ready to be transferred. So because I am going to be using a flame... Um, I'm going to flame sterilize my needle. And I'm going to be flame sterilizing my scalpel. I'm going to go ahead and use my bleach inside of here. I'm not going to be like wiping down the inside of it. I'm just spraying it with with this bleach and water. Spray the down, spray down the lid. And you can see I said that that lid would be kind of a pain in the butt to use, which it kind of will be, but it's sectioned off into four quadrants, um, and there's flat spaces all in there. So I'm not going to let those ribs bother me. I'm not going to put anything down because of it. I'm just going to go ahead and use them as is. So I'll put a little bit of this in my hands. And now I'm gonna start bringing in what I'm gonna be using. So these are my, this is my agar plate. This is my clean agar plate. Another clean agar plate. And I've still got tape on there. I haven't taken any of the tape off of this. Um, and I won't take the tape off until it's inside of here. I don't wanna inter introduce anything brand new into here. I wanna to try to keep this as clean as I can inside this area. I need to do my lighter. Here's some spores that we're gonna be. Using my scalpel. And then I'm gonna take a little jar and I put it inside here so I can put my tools on top of this, on top of this jar. That way I don't have to lay them flat down and keep getting my hands against the very bottom of this box. Okay, so let's get started. First thing I want to do is I'm going to work with my spores. There's no particular reason I'm going this order. That's just where I'm going to start at. So that's my parafilm tape. I'm gonna put that off to the side. So my spores, again, I wanna have, I wanna use a uh, flame to sterilize the tip. I'm waiting for that flame to get red hot. And before I started this video, I gave these spores a really good shake. So you, before you do anything with these, with these spores, you want to make sure you shake them up real good. The, this particular strain is in very clear water, and, there's, and it's really difficult to, to see the spores. So I can't really show you what the... Usually there's a black spore clump that's in there, but on these one, there's, there's no spore clump. All we're looking for is a couple of drips of spores right onto the agar plate, and we're done with it. Okay, next up, we're gonna do an agar to agar transfer. Um, <clears throat> normally I would stop right now and I would, I would uh, label this plate with what those spores are, but because I'm gonna keep these ones separate, there's only gonna be two of them in here, so I won't worry about it. I'm not gonna stop the video for that. But labeling is really important because once the mycelium starts to, uh, to grow, you can't tell one mycelium from another. And if you can, I, I certainly don't know how to. And again, we're looking for this to be, oops, before I do that, I need to take this parafilm tape off. Sorry about that. So this is what I'm gonna be transferring out of, and this is what I'm gonna transfer into. because my hands just dragged all across the bottom. 
I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more bleach water on there. Okay, let's try this again. So again, we're looking for this, just like the needle, we want this tip to get red hot. Make sure we get anything that might have been on the tip from before off of there. Give our mycelium as good a chance as we can for it to be in a sterile environment. Okay, and then once this thing is red hot, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open our empty agar plate, the one we're transferring to, and we're just gonna take our scalpel and shove it into, and that kind of wipes any of the soot off and anything, anything else that might have been stuck on the, on the end of the scalpel, it wipes it off into our plate off to the side. So now we're gonna take our fresh plate here. It's a little hard to see through the box and because this mycelium is incredibly overgrown, I'm just taking a chunk from kind of anywhere. Normally you'd be looking for the best genetics. You'd be looking for what's growing the fastest, what segment's growing the fastest out of here. Take this, move the plate over here. You're just gonna drop this straight down inside, drag the scalpel across the agar. That's the easiest way to get that stuff to release. And just like that, you're done. So put this over here, keep these plates separate. I'm going to get some parafilm tape to rewrap those plates. So this is what parafilm tape, this is how it comes in a roll like this. Um, what I do is I cut it into a strip about inch and a half, two inches long, and it comes out thick like that, and then I cut it in half so I get more out of it rather than, that's really wasteful to wrap all that around the plate. This, old, this little piece right here will do just fine. <clears throat> What you want to do is take the, wrap it off like that. We're going to take this plate out of here. It's pretty well protected at this point. I'm going to take it out so I can show you how I wrap this stuff. Let's put my thumb on one side, clamp this, this plate down so it can't open up and get exposed to anything. And this parafilm tape, when you pull it, oops, when you pull it, it uh, stretches out and sticks really nicely to itself. There we go. That's kind of a chopped up job for you guys, but you get the idea. And then the first thing I want to do, or the next thing I want to do is I want to label this. Dry the top off. This is, so I'll label it with the strain that it is. I'll label it with the date. Uh, today, whoops, today is 11, 16, and then this started out as, this is transfer number two. And that's how I label that so I can tra keep track of what it is. In another seven days, I'll be ready to do another transfer on that.